Hello everyone. Cześć. To Paulina Lipiec, uh, 50% of 1000 Reasons to Learn Polish. Um, I have a question for you in the beginning. Do you know how many words do you need to read a full book in your target language? If you know, you can type a comment below this video and later during the video I'll try to reveal it. And today's video is all about stories. A couple of days ago I made a small survey in our group Polish for Foreigners, Mówimy po Polsku, in which I asked what are your favorite techniques to, to learn Polish, to study Polish. And most of our students, most of the members of the group, chose Duolingo, of course, and also reading texts um, on their own, like, like a piece of paper with dictionary, what I assume. Um, and of course, uh, this is an amazing method. This is very old school, but it works for me as well. Um, but what kind of texts do we enjoy uh, when we are learning a language? It can be a dull text. It can be a philosophical piece by Immanuel Kant. Then we, we can't just understand at all. Um, it has to be something engaging. It has to be a good story. So what kind of stories can you read in the beginning of your uh, adventure with Polish or maybe later when you're a little bit more advanced? I'm going to talk about it as well today, uh, but if you have an idea, what are the characters, uh, what are the features of a good story for beginners, for intermediate students, and also for advanced students, um, share it with us, please. I see that um, there are already um, viewers here. Maybe you have an idea what is a good story. Uh, stories are amazing for many reasons. First of all, it moves um, the time that you spend with a story, it's not anymore your study time. Now it becomes play time. As if you're interested in learning languages, you probably know that you should have like 50% of study time, like intensive studying, and 50% of play time. Then reading stories usually is, count is counted as um, study time. But here, if you enjoy the story, if you're really involved, it becomes a play time. So good story asks you a lot of questions. You're very uncertain what happens in the story. You want to know more. So your brain stops thinking that this is studying. It wants to get, get to know more. It's dying to get to, to know more. Um, and it fills the blanks, those words and those question marks on its own, assuming the meaning. Because you just want to proceed. You want to get to know more and more and more and more. Um, there are some studies, researchers, which say um, that if you're on B1, B2 level, so your vocabulary is about 3,000, maybe 4,000 words, you should be able to understand 95% of regular texts, let's say articles. And it somehow works like that, that's true. Mm, but if you're learning, it's okay to know less. It's okay to not being able to understand 25% of a text because you're treating it less as a pleasure, more as studying. Then you work with dictionary, maybe you work with a, a teacher on this text, maybe you solve some questions. It's perfectly okay. Another important uh, feature in stories, in a good story which will help you learn, are characters. And now I have a question for you, a very important question, especially uh, for those who know Krok po kroku. Uh, Thalia is saying that she, she, she thinks she will never get to be one in Polish. I'm not so sure about it. I already, I think I watched your video in our group and it was really nice and it, it's possible. It's possible. It just, it takes time, that's normal. Maybe stories will help you. Or maybe you should start listening to podcasts been recording a lot of podcasts recently. Maybe, maybe they could be a why? Well, <laughs> oh no, Elaine. No, I don't think that it's forever, forever in a A two. 
it just takes a lot of practice because the first levels takes very quickly to to pass and then mm, <laughs> you're welcome dear uh, and then uh, you just it slows down like for me i'll be always in english i will be always maybe c1 b2 because I just I, I just don't care that much that to be honest because I can communicate and I don't do anything I just watch movies it's all passive but if you're active learner you're going to make it like vocabulary grammar and a lot of conversations okay coming back to the stories and my question if you're a user of Krok po Kroku series the question is who is mommy do you know mommy Mami is a Japanese student, of course, in Krok po Kroku series. And the second question would be, what's the name of the Argentinian student in Krok po Kroku books? Even if you're not watching us, uh, Mami Takada. <laughs> of course, of course, everyone knows Mami and everyone knows that, um, that Javier is the Argentinian student and he's a musician, he's a dancer. Uh, Uwe? Uwe is from Germany. Uwe is Niemiec, on is businessman. But of course, you already uh, recognize these uh, characters. And this is how the book Krok po Kroku is built and why it's it's, it's big, big ad, uh, advantage. Um, because because you, get, you, you care about them. You want to know what they're going to do in next chapters. You want to skip some chapters to <laughs> to get to know to their uh, their adventures, <laughs> Talia agrees ag uh, again. Yeah, I would I would love to have such a book in Arabic when I'm just like reading it like a book, like a story. And uh, so, what do you think? If if one thousand reasons to learn Polish would like to have a character, who would be the best character? And what is your favorite character from Krok po Kroku? Is it Mami, Angela, Uwe? Javier, Tom, who else is in the book? There's Pani Mai, Pan Mai. Who's your favorite? I have my uh, favorite one, but I'm not going to tell you yet. If you can, if you have an idea uh, about our brand hero, who could it be? Also, I'm, uh, we would be very, very grateful for, uh, for your comments. But coming back to stories, okay. So, um, where can you start? What stories can you read in the beginning where, where you're a beginner, you're maybe in Krok po Kroku or in Hura in first classes, you, you don't know maybe past tense or maybe you're just starting and you want to read something. So a couple of months ago, I got to know about a book called um, First Polish Reader. It's like you have a text on the left side is in Polish, on the right side is in English, um, and you have vocabulary. but I found out these texts are pretty boring. It's like, I know it's like very, very beginning, 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 but it's quite boring. But a couple of weeks ago, I got to know actually from, um, from Kirsty, uh, who, um, who's also a member of our group, that there's a book, this book, Chitai, by Glossa. It's a, it's a book by Anna Stelmach. Very tiny book with a couple of stories. 10 stories in it for beginners and the best thing the characters of this book are also the characters from Krok po Kroku series so you're going to meet Mami you're going to meet Javier here and you're going to meet Carol and Carolina and all of them yeah you can just order and it's super cheap it's 20 something water and another thing you have recordings for it in the middle of the book you have a code, you can go to their page, you can download their recordings, and you can just read along. Um, I think, Alia, that this book could be too easy for you, but well, it's not a big investment, and the stories are quite nice. They are usually have like two pages. I'll show you one of them. This is a story called Torba, and uh, actually, this is my favorite story, I think, in the whole book, because it's, it's focused on an object. Someone found a bag, and with friends, they're analyzing what is in this bag and trying to assume who lost the bag. And the story doesn't have the ending. What actually gives you, <laughs> oh, okay, I guess that my review worked for you. Um, 
Okay, I will find the link and I will post it here. I'm not sure if it's available on Amazon yet. Um, let's get to know about it. I didn't make such a research before, but I look for it for sure after the video. Um, okay, so what can you do with this book? Also, we say you can think what would be the story, what would be the en the ending. And uh, you get to know more about the characters. And there's one more thing. You have exercises. There are some grammar exercises, vocabulary exercises. And you have a vocabulary place for like a dictionary for your own words. These are words in English. The translations are in English. If, you, if you're a um, speaker of a different language. I really Easy. Like also on mm, on sites. Okay, that's for beginners, and I really recommend this one to be for beginners. Um, like I myself, I love stories. I like reading stories and writing stories, and this is a big part of learning for me. But what can intermediate students do if they want to read? There are not not not, not so many books for them because a lot of students try to read. Mm, like regular books, novels in, um, let's say, um, Polish. And there are a lot of good writers in Polish. Like Polish literature is so, uh, so big and great, and I love so many of them. But unfortunately, I can't recommend all of them to you because Polish writers like to show off, and there's a lot of poetic descriptions. There are a lot of descriptions also. And there are some, mm, a lot of metaphors and other links to our culture and history. And it's really hard. So I have a, a couple of advices for intermediate students about choosing a good lecture for, for yourself, good a book. Um, don't think Sienkiewicz, so one of our greatest writers, because um, 19th century vocabulary, you're going, it, it's going to stop you forever. And you're never going to read this book. Um, maybe don't read, I know that some of you think, okay, but I'm an adult, I want to read something serious, something that I'm really interested in. But slow down, don't be too ambitious about it. Because it's going to stop you when you feel that this is too, ex too, too complicated. Okay, so better to try to think about criminal books, something that would be easy for you to read, and also something that maybe you, you already read in your own language. For example, you already read um, a Girl with Dragon Tattoo, buy it in Polish, and then you will already know the story, so you can focus on language a little bit more. And actually, I wouldn't mind to read this book two times. Um, you can consider also uh, reading typically Polish criminals by, uh, for example, Joanna Chmielewska. Joanna Chmielewska is like, she wrote a lot of criminal books, and they are available and um, probably also online. You could probably order it. Mm -hmm. Think about short stories. I will think about some links for you, like uh, Elaine suggested. I will try to put it in comments. Um, what, what books would be good for you? Or what uh, short stories you could read? Um, what about books for children? A lot of students start with books for children, but I uh, tried a lot of books like this. Um, and I read a lot of them. Um, and I think that the vocabulary there is a bit tricky because it's usually about daily routine of children and it also contains a lot of diminutive forms. So everything will be like cute, tiny and sweet and it would be kubeczek, pieniążek, samochodzik. Um, and I'm not sure if all this vocabulary is really useful for you if you don't have children. But if you do, you probably already read these books. Um, okay, and stories for, um, for teenagers, they are also good um, because they don't have so many big serious problems and descriptions of emotional states and not so many comparisons. Um, they are more about action and something that's happening um, at the time. Elaine found already the um, link for this book, yes? Okay, wonderful. So if, if you like the description and you think that it's going to help you, um, go and order it. Cool, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, so there's a nice uh, series of books for um, teenagers. 
by Małgorzata Musierowicz. There are many volumes um, of, of these books, of her books. It's all about uh, like a saga on Polish family could, which starts in and quite engaging. There are books by Ewan Black, a sister. And the books are also for teenagers, but if you're able to, to find them somewhere online, um, they are not very complicated. Of course, step by step, after these books, you can go probably to a normal literature because after reading 300 pages of a book for teenagers, you're going to have very, very rich vocabulary. Okay, so what can you do with the book? <clears throat> even with Chutai, even if you're, you're a beginner, don't stop on reading the last word. Do exercises, put new vocabulary to your Quizlet or to your Anki or your um, Memrise, but also talk about the content of the story with your language partner, anyone who speaks. that no one chose the option writing in my poll, unfortunately, because writing really gives you so many opportunities, not only to be creative, but to use new, new vocabulary and to think slowly, because you can always check the words in, in the dictionary, you can always think it again, you can think through the structure of a sentence, um, and it doesn't have to be long. So about the story, you can write a spin-off, you can write a new ending, you can write a summary, you can change the form of the, of the story instead of like a normal story, you can just write a dialogue or you can write a review. And if you want to write in the review uh, and you want someone to, to check it, but you don't have anyone, you can always send it to me. Um, um, my email is paulina at uh, polskidaily.eu. Uh, and I'm serious, uh, I'm going to, like, if you send me your story or your spin-off or whatever, I will gladly help you um, in, in your writing. I will correct your mistakes and maybe give you some hints. Oh, that's it actually for today. Um, thank you so much for taking part in this uh, Facebook Live. And thank you so much for the comments and for being engaged. And uh, once again, this book you can order, you can find the link in the comments, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. If you have any, qu any questions, comment, 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 and share it if you can, if you like it. See you. Do zobaczenia.